is about the schema module which is a really handy module that basically lets you look at your Drupal database uh, through the Drupal site. So there are sort of two main aspects of it um, are that you can get information about the database tables and fields and then you can also it can help you generate uh, a structure for a new module that you're building based on the data that you've already created in the database. Now there are uh, there's a Drupal 5 and Drupal 6 version for the module, um, but the new schema API went in uh, and started in Drupal 6. So that's what we'll be looking at. Uh, I've got a basic Drupal 6 site set up already, and the first thing we need to do is actually enable the module. So download it and install it like any other module that you would have. And once that is done, you'll notice uh, under Administer Site Building, we now have a new section called Schema. And when you go here, you'll see all the different uh, kinds of tasks that you can do. The first thing is comparing. It's simply going to compare your database. It'll look for mismatches, so if something's changed in your database, uh, missing tables, and extra tables. Um, so this is just a quick check to say, does your database actually match what the code expects? And we're going to look at uh, what a mismatch will do here. I'm going into my database uh, and uh, going into the access table. And I'm going to edit the status field of my access table. I'm going to change the type from tiny int to int. Um, so it's not like a massive change, but it's definitely a change. And uh, when I go back into my Drupal site that's running on this database, now it's telling me I actually have a mismatch. Um, and so it tells you which uh, module created the table that's been affected. It tells me that this is the access table that's been changed. And uh, it also tells me which column within that table, which is the status column, status field. And then it just basically gives me, like in, in Drupal code, um, what the changes are. So this is what is declared by the user module. So in user's install file, this is what it's looking for. And in the database, this is what we have. So we have this width, and the size is missing. It's not tiny, as, as far as Drupal schema is concerned. So, uh, so I'm going to go back and uh, flip this back so that I don't completely mess up my Drupal installation. So I'll change it back from an int to a tiny int. I save that, go back to the site, uh, and now when I reload, it'll tell me that it's not mismatched anymore. So now my database matches my code as it expects. The next handy thing here um, is this describe. And this is pretty darn cool and something that you can only get in Drupal 6 because of the new schema API. Um, basically what this does is it tells you what all the stuff in the database is. So it has the table and it has the module that's created that table listed next to it. Um, so if we open something up here, you'll see it lists all of the fields. Um, it has descriptions for them. Let's go down and look at boxes. Boxes is always a weird table. Everybody's like, what in the world's boxes? So it tells me the block module's creating this. Um, it has my field name. It gives me the type. Uh, you can see the different fields it's looking at. The cool thing is this description bit here. It's actually telling me what that field's for. It's for the blocks blocks.bid. Now, that looks like a typo, but the blocks here is referring to another table. So it's referring to the blocks table, and the bid is the field within that table. So if I click on that blocks link, it takes me to the blocks table now, and I can see that it has a bid. Um, so those two are related to each other. And we have the other fields and information. Same thing down here with format. Again, filter formats dot format. Um, filter format is uh, another table in our database, which is shown down here. And it's basically linked up to the uh, format field in that table. So if we go into the database itself and looked at boxes, you'll see there are the four fields. Um, but in the database, I don't know what they're for. Um, but using schema, uh, I have some description about what's going on and how they're related to other things, um, which is 
really handy. It also has uh, just a, a description of the overall table, so it's for custom-made blocks. It's called Boxes, stores contents of custom-made blocks. There you go. Same thing, auth map. People are like, what is that? Well, that's uh, distributed authentication mapping. So the describe functionality uh, that you get with schema is, is awesome. Um, now, that would only exist if uh, people actually put descriptions in, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, under inspect, you actually get whatever, you get the, the Drupal schema um, array that would be necessary for the various tables. So the block module has created all of these and you'll find this in the uh, basically in the install file. Although this is pulling it from the database, it's not pulling it from the install file. Uh, the SQL, SQL just tab just gives you the, the straight pure SQL for the database. And then uh, show gives you an array uh, printout of what's going on. And you'll see that here's where this description is. It's part of this array uh, in the schema and we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in a second. So let me pull over my text editor here with uh, with the with the file. So this is the uh, I am looking at the block modules install file. So I'm in the block module core block module block install. And uh, if I uh, roll down here a bit, um, you'll see that basically this is the array that is setting up all of the uh, tables and fields uh, in the database. Uh, and so here you can see this is for the boxes table. We have the description for the boxes table. So this is what we saw on that describe tab. And then uh, underneath that table, we have the fields listed. So there's the BID and there's a description for that. And this is where we had that link to the blocks uh, table and such in our descriptions. So um, if a module does not have this description line in the array in its .install file, then you won't get anything useful uh, on that describe tab. And if you do find something that a uh, module that doesn't have that, then go ahead and create an issue uh, in the issue queue for that and create a patch and say, hey, you know, description would be really handy for this. Here's a patch. Uh, and then everybody can benefit from that. So, um, so the next thing I want to do, so that's like just looking at stuff and descriptions. Um, but the next thing I want to do is actually uh, create a new um, table um, as though I was creating a new module that, that needed a new table um, and see how this can help me generate uh, the code that I need to actually uh, put in my install file. So I'm creating a new table for my module. And I'm just going to go ahead and put some fields. I'm just going to put two fields in here um, and just sort of pick some stuff sort of uh, randomly um, just, just to give you a sense of, of how this works. Um, and so I'm just in, my, in the database using phpMyAdmin, making stuff as I figure out how to make my module work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make that, that ID a, uh, a primary key. And, uh, and then I'll go ahead and just save this table. So now I have a new table in my Drupal database um, that I want my, my custom module to use for some reason for stuff I need. So, um, so if I go back after I've added that and I go to the inspect tab, now you'll see that uh, you know down there are the regular modules, but this has an unknown because it doesn't know what's going on yet. There's, there's just this extra table suddenly in the database, but it's seeing that. If you go back to compare, you can see it's showing that we have extra. We have an extra table now. Um, and so it's also set everything up in this nice, uh, that the, uh, the Drupal schema API is going to be looking for in order to build the, the database tables that it needs. So um, what I'm going to do is go back over uh, to my text editor here, and I'm actually going to start putting this together for my module. Um, so I don't need to be in the block module anymore. Let me uh, go there, although I do want to use it just as a, a quick copy paste. I'm going to go into my modules file, um, and this is my module.install file. I don't have anything in there yet. Um, and uh, what I'll do is go up here and, uh, you know, it's always handy to just copy stuff from existing rather than typing everything out. So I need a block schema hook. And um, so that's the basics. And then it needs to return schema array. So put that in there. And now I need the actual schema array 
then actually has the, you know, tells Drupal, this is what I need you to build in the database for me. So what I can do is go back over here. Now we have this, this handy dandy inspection, which is showing me what the array is to build what I have in my live database. All I have to do is copy and paste that in. And I'm going to do a little bit of formatting because uh, this looks just making me a little nuts just looking at it. So uh, let me just format this real quickly here. Make it a little bit easier to read um, and just generally kind of a good idea to, uh, to, to format everything so that it's easy to read in your module for your sanity and for other people who are looking at your work. Um, so, yeah, each of these arrays should be indented. Sorry, I know this is a little bit, a little bit tedious, but uh, seriously, it makes it much nicer to work with. Um, make sure you have commas after your array items. That's a Drupal coding standard. All right. Uh, it looks more better. Okay, so uh, this is the basic thing. This is basically what I need uh, in order to build the stuff that I've that I've created. Um, there's the table name, and what it is missing is the description, because uh, that's not in the database. That's something that's only in our install files. Um, so what I need to do is add a description in here um, for the table. So this top one here is for the table. And I'm just going to put stuff in here. Obviously, the more detailed uh, a description you can put, uh, the more useful it will be to both yourself, coworkers, uh, and other people who are, who are looking at your module. So, uh, And then I'm going to just copy-paste that um, into the two fields I have here. So I have my ID, so I get a, a description under the field name it as well, under my ID, so I'll change this. Now remember this was a primary key, so that's probably an important bit of information, so I'll make sure I note that in my description. Uh, and it's the I, you know, main ID for my module, whatever. Um, same thing down here for the test field. All right, so I need a description for that field as well. I'm not particularly good at just sort of making up uh, random stuff, but obviously you would put information that was actually useful uh, in here to, to explain to people what this field is actually going to be used for in your module. And um, so now I can save that. Now I still need to do like my hook install, hook uninstall, and the other stuff like that. But this is this is how I would build the schema for my module. So it did it did all that work for me. All I had to do was actually just create it and then schema module went ahead and read that and figured out what I needed to do in order to uh, to get it into my modules code without a whole lot of me trying to figure out what oh, was that an int or a tiny int? what is that just let schema module do the work for you. So that's a brief introduction to schema module very cool module you should definitely uh, check it out and uh, have fun.